Well, uh, first and foremost, thing, uh, well, uh, I, I want to thank all the um, uh, uh, all the folks who had uh, pitched all the uh, 12 companies, all the CEOs and uh, the founders of these 12 companies who had uh, taken uh, time to pitch us today. Uh, so we, we, first of all, on behalf of AZ Bio, uh, we thank them for, for their pitch. Uh, and and um, I'm, I'm Kiran Avancha. I'm the Associate Vice President for Innovation and Investments at Honor Health. Uh, I'm also an entrepreneur myself. I built a, 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 a co-founded a, a pharmaceutical uh, a biotech company, um, and it's in the ultra rare uh, disease space. Uh, and uh, I also had previously co-founded and exited a, a CRO business. Uh, so this is my second uh, uh, startup. Uh, so I'm really uh, fortunate to have here uh, James Golka um, uh, from um, uh, AZ Tech Investors and uh, Joanne from uh, Desert Angels. So um, I would love to have uh, uh, J uh, Jim, would you like to go ahead and introduce uh, yourself to the panel and to the members on the call today? Sure. So uh, ATI, as we refer to it, is the Angel Group in Phoenix. And we are about 110 members, uh, men and women who write checks out of their own pocketbooks to invest in early stage companies. We've invested in approximately 35 life science companies over the years. Uh, some that have done very well and others have failed as you would expect in this kind of environment. And we're happy to do it. I, I'm a serial entrepreneur having been CEO of seven businesses, some successful and some not, some angel funded and some VC funded and I've done some not-for-profit things as well. And I did tech transfer for NASA for a while. Thanks, Jim. Um, love to introduce uh, Joan. Uh, Joan, would you mind going ahead and introduce uh, yourself to the team? Yeah, thank you. So uh, Desert Angels is a group of angel investors, um, much like ATI. And in fact, we often work together and collaborate on opportunities. Uh, we have about a hundred active members uh, since 2010, uh, our members have invested about $51 million into just over 100 companies, uh, 240 deals. So we do a lot of follow-on uh, effort as well. And roughly 40% of our portfolio of companies are in the life science space. Um, and for my background, uh, computer engineer, entrepreneur, uh, did a couple of startups, had some successes, which were great, which is why I can be an investor today, and some failures which is also why I spent quite a few years as an educator. So uh, definitely appreciate the presentations today. Great, so again, uh, what do you look for in a company? Uh, so I'll start with you, Joanne. What, what, what kind of uh, uh, attributes or contributes that you look in a specific company when you, when you invest? Right, so kind of in a, a nutshell, we, we do look across most industries. We're looking for scalable innovation, companies founded on innovation, and science, technology, and um, software. Uh, and uh, number one thing that we look at in a company besides the, uh, the stage and, and the technology is of course the team and their ability to, uh, to execute towards success. Jim, the same question for you. What would you look for uh, in a company? You're gonna hear a lot of harmonies between Joanne and me because we do a lot of things together and we, uh, uh, look at companies in pretty much the same way. Uh, I'd say that in, in the life sciences, we're looking for a couple of things. The first is that if there is no actual IP, we're not interested. Mm -hmm. Because in, in, in software, sometimes there's IP, uh, there's, there are patents, but that's not very important in most instances. But in uh, devices, diagnostics, therapies, those are you know, no IP, there's no business there. The second is that we are really interested in companies that have a combination of science and business capabilities. I mean, I, I've asked the question on a couple of occasions uh, this morning even about that. Uh, I use as an example, a company in Phoenix where the uh, uh, researchers uh, are faculty members at ASU and they hired an executive to run the spin out from the university and freely acknowledged they wanna be in the lab and teach and they want a business guy, in this case, a male, to run the business uh, that they will participate in. And that's it. And they, they, the three of them are just a terrific founding team because they bring all the skills and an appreciation of what each other brings. 
whereas the companies that are typically solely led by scientists uh, often have a lab-oriented uh, approach to things and uh, don't pay as much attention to the nitty-gritty of doing business and uh, it could create impediments to actual commercialization. That's a, that's a good way to put it. And uh, so what, what are your major investments, uh, Jim, so far in, in the companies in the AZ ecosystem? Uh, the successful ones? Is that what you yeah. want to go by? Oh, well, yeah. Well, so I think we should, we should, we should <laughs> talk both, but, but let's talk about the successful ones. All right. So the, the successful ones I'll mention are, are a handful. We, uh, two that we have exited are uh, known by a lot of people in Phoenix. Uh, it's WebPT and Campus Logic, both of which we made yep. very substantial returns investing in extremely good companies. Uh, we have some that we are very high on right now that are still you know, in the raising funds from VCs that are doing well and growing substantially. And, and uh, they are uh, 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 GT Med Technologies and uh, Oral Analytics as examples. No, those are, those are good companies on that. Uh, John, uh, the same question for you. What, what are the, the companies that you look, uh, uh, that you had success in AZ ecosystem? So I could just say ditto. Uh, many of the same companies. Um, we also invested in Paradigm Diagnostics, which was acquired by Exact Sciences. <clears throat> but I would like to add that a success is about a lot of things, right? It's the return to our members. It's the return to the company and the success that they see, but it's also the return to our community. And I think we have an important role to play in, in, eco, in the ecosystem development. There's one question that uh, uh, most of the uh, startups would look into beyond capital, right? I mean, as, as uh, they come in and they say, okay, look, I, I want a particular investor for not just the, uh, uh, the capital, but also from a strategic standpoint of view. So John, um, what would you as, a, uh, as an investor offer uh, or your group offers to um, uh, startups beyond uh, capital? Well, first of all, I love it when companies say we want more than just money. Uh, and so that's, that's really uh, important. Um, we have just like ATI and I'll, I'll let Jim comment, but uh, we have you know, a depth and breadth of expertise from our membership. And so we're often able to bring maybe a seat on the board, but also um, connections in the industry, mentoring and guidance and support. We also build a good relationship because half of the deals we do are follow on funding rounds. So, you know, we want to build a relationship for long-term success. Jim, what's the, what are you looking? So we start out as uh, we are in minority investors. We are first and foremost, as Joanne said, probably in her first comment, uh, we're investing in the team. So we're investing in principally the CEO and as well as the rest of the team. And we expect them to be successful. We're not looking to take over the company. Mm -hmm. But to, make the, to help make the company a success, we deploy as many of our members as are interested in that particular company to help, whether it's on a governing board or an advisory board or a mentor to the CEO or to any of the uh, uh, other executives. Uh, we often you know, open up our contact databases. If we know somebody that a company should be talking to, we make introductions. We don't take fees for those introductions because the rewards will come Mm -hmm. from the equity investments that our members will have made. So it's, uh, it's the kind of activity that really makes us angels. Uh, and it's about individuals choosing to be involved with a company because they think they can really help out. So what's your typical uh, investment uh, size uh, like? And uh, do you do any follow-up investments, Jim? Yeah, our, our, our mean of our, our deals over the years is, is just over $200,000. And the typical round is somewhere between a million and, and $2 million. So when we talk to new potential new members, it, we talk about you need to build a portfolio of multiple companies and you need to keep some cash uh, in your pocket because uh, multiple rounds will come along. And if you like a, a company, invest in it a second or a third time. We've done a bunch of companies with uh, investments three times, you know, three different rounds at higher valuations. Uh, so it's, the idea is invest broadly, invest wisely. Uh, and that makes it possible for somebody to uh, ride with a company that they really like. 
The same question for for you, Jan. Uh, what's your typical uh, ticket size? Like? Yeah, it's the same, roughly the same answer. Uh, the median size is about two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, roughly. Um, we also look at the ARI Halo report, and they um, share statistics regionally for deals. So sometimes we'll refer to that when we're thinking about valuation of a company. And how many deals do you do typically per year um, uh, as Desert Angels, John? Uh, we'll do on average about 20 deals. We did 20 deals in 2020 and we did 21 deals in 2019. So it's uh, kind of exciting to see that we didn't really have a big change in the number of deals we did despite COVID. Yeah, that's a, that's a quite a number. Jim, the same uh, question for you in terms of the number of deals. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, for a lot of years, we were we did fewer deals per year than Desert Angels. Uh, but last year in 2020, which is our biggest year, we did nine, uh, sorry, 19 deals, which is the largest number of deals we'd had ever done. And it was in the COVID year, which I thought was, was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And they were split about evenly between new deals and uh, add-ons to uh, uh, prior investments. And this year, we're on a track to do somewhere right around 15. Oh, that's, a, that's great uh, in terms of the... What's your uh, timeline for doing each uh, deal, uh, Jim? I mean, can you walk us through how long will it take from a company pitching in to how long for closing this company to... So we have to think of it, there's two, fa two major phases here. The first is an application process. We have a wide open mm -hmm. window. Anybody can apply to us mm -hmm. and anybody does. So I, I touch about 1,500 companies a year. Mm -hmm. And as you'd expect, most of those don't make any sense for us at all. But we have to get through that process. So our screening, which is what we call our selection process, uh, typically takes about six to eight weeks company will submit an application and we have a formal application. And if it, in the early pro, uh, rounds, we, I basically I determine whether a company is worth paying attention to. Then we have our 11 member screening committee. Each member will review a, an application. And then we have several steps to winnow that down to typically three companies that pitch at a meeting. And from the meeting, which is for all of our members, uh, after that, members who are interested in the company start doing due diligence. And that we try to make as quick as possible, uh, targeting a six to eight weeks, but that's all dependent upon people being available and all. And sometimes we don't quite do it that fast. So to think of it all in from, oh, I, I need to supply an application to ATI, uh, it's probably six weeks to member pitch, and then another six to eight weeks to uh, get through diligence and close. Thank you. John, um, how about your uh, Desert Angels? Yeah, so we follow a similar process. And I think a lot of angel groups do something similar with the pretty comprehensive screening and review um, mm -hmm. and the meeting. Uh, but from a time perspective, you know, I'll give you an answer that Base Horner, the chairman of our screening panel, uh, who, who recently retired, he used to say, it really depends on the company. It can, the fastest we've ever gone through the process has been 30 days. And the longest we've ever been through the process has probably been three years. <laughs> it's a pretty long time to invest yeah. in a company. <laughs> and what, what's your typical uh, uh, round in which you, you want to come in and, 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 and also the preferred structure? I mean, do you, do you take the convertible loans? Do you take the equity or what's, the, what's your preferred uh, model as a, as a, I know, uh, you know, you, you have some restrictions in doing, but I, I was just curious to hear your thoughts on. Yeah, so for Desert Angels, uh, we're seed and early stage. We do occasionally Series A. We've recently done a Series B, but mostly seed and early stage. We like equity and we will do convertible notes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very much the same in that. Uh, we much prefer preferred stock. Yeah. Uh, convertible notes we do as bridges to a, a preferred stock round. Uh, if a company comes to us with a three-year convertible note, they're just dodging valuation and we don't think that's a smart thing to do, though some lawyers will advise that. Uh, so we'll do convertible notes, but we want them to be shorter, ideally less than a year. Uh, for those that know about these things, we don't do safes or kisses or any of these exotica because they are very investor unfriendly. Mm -hmm. 
No, I, I agree. Um, so I think uh, we're 16, uh, 15 minutes into the conversation. So uh, what what is it like from uh, your standpoint of your gym in regards to the current ecosystem in Arizona for investments? You know, how do you see the biotech investments coming across um, in the last several years? Uh, how do you see the ecosystem in uh, moving? So it's, it's been interesting. I'm just going to talk about for, for me and for ATI, two themes. Uh, the first theme is that I was at a Desert Angels meeting maybe 10 years ago, and there was a company that pitched a very interesting product with a very experienced CEO, and it was intended to be a cure for uh, HIV. And I thought, wow, this is really great. So I'm driving home, and I'm thinking, that's really terrific. And then I thought, what do you know about this? And I said, I know nothing about it. I haven't a clue as to how to evaluate the competitive set. I don't know what any of the issues are. And I, you know, so I decided the, 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 the logical part of my brain said, don't do this, but look at your the membership in ATI. And we had essentially no life science people in the group. Yeah. So one of the strategic project projects was to develop that. And so now we are about a third of our members have some kind of life science background uh, some, you know, of, of all kinds. And that coincided, I think, with the observation, I think, across the whole ecosystem, particularly in Phoenix, that Phoenix wasn't just going to be a real estate place or a real estate plus semiconductor place. And with the, the tremendous development of medical schools now, we, you know, we have three in, in Phoenix, we're about to have three in Phoenix, and the research and commercialization activities that are going on at the major hospital organizations and the universities doing things like Biodesign Institute, that the simple flow of opportunities was much greater than it had been years before. So Phoenix has become a life science hub of pretty substantial proportions. We didn't want to miss out on that. So it was a, let's, let's find a means to do that, which means we needed some expertise in the group. The second thing that's happened is probably around 2017, there was an inflection point in terms of the quality of deals that we saw across the board. It was as if all of the posers had left and we were left with a lot of very capable people who knew what they were doing, many serial entrepreneurs with business plans that were well thought out. And so the, the, the frequency of high quality companies has been much greater in the last few years than before. It, it, and, and of course, I, 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 I'm, when I said Phoenix, I mean, we're, it's not just Phoenix. I mean, Tucson and, and the whole Arizona ecosystem in general. Um, I moved here six years ago, seven years ago into the Phoenix ecosystem. Um, but um, John, I, I, I gather you're, you're based in Tucson. So I want to make sure that we are, we are covering the whole Arizona as an ecosystem in terms of that. So what do you see as that uh, ecosystem in the biotech investments uh, moving forward in the, in the state? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't have too much to add to what Jim said. I will say it's an exciting time to be a founder in the life science space here in Arizona. Resources are, new resources are coming online. You know, our, the companies in which we funded have um, created jobs and attracted new resources to our community and our region, you know, across the state. The work that Joan is doing with AZ Bio is, is incredible. The conversations that we're having the activities with the Flynn Foundation, Karen, the work that you're doing, I think all of us together have raised the conversation in a really significant way. And we are making an impact and having a difference, right? And so now's the time. If, if there's anybody on the call thinking about, should I do the company or shouldn't I do it? My answer is do it. And if there's anybody on the call thinking about, should I become an investor or not sure? My answer would be, you know, do it. Now's the, now's the time. So I think we're in a really good position and I see a lot of exciting things happening in our immediate future. No, oh, thank you, John. Uh, so from that standpoint of, I want to share that as, uh, as, uh, as uh, on a health as a, uh, a second largest health system in the state of Arizona, we, we are uh, moving in the direction of establishing our innovation fund. Uh, we're in the process of establishing the, uh, the, the innovation ecosystem within the uh, health system as such. 
Uh, we have uh, a, a robust uh, research infrastructure that has been here for the last uh, uh, decade and a half uh, at the research as the research institute. We have been at the forefront of uh, conducting uh, therapeutic clinical trials, uh, device clinical trials, first in human research. Now we are expanding our expertise into the space of um, uh, uh, venture funding and incubator uh, uh, through a collaborative uh, approach the, through UFA, ASU, TGen, Mayo, uh, uh, Flynn, AZ Bio. So we, we want to bring in an ecosystem where we create a platform for all these clinicians uh, and, and and healthcare experts within the within our own health system, but also outside of uh, 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 on health, because we we call it our Switzerland, where it's neutral in terms of how you how you how you run the. Uh, in, in innovation and incubation. So with that, we, we would be launching a innovation fund um, and, uh, and we are looking for uh, investments in, um, and we we're looking to make investments in, in the space of uh, uh, biotech, therapeutic, diagnostic, and uh, digital health. We have already made four investments in the last three and a half, four years um, in a medical device company, in a diagnostic company, in a um, uh, in a uh, digital health company and as well as in a, uh, a therapeutic company. So we have covered all four spaces. Now we're now um, uh, concentrating the part in terms of identifying those right uh, 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 companies, not only as a investor, but also as a potential strategic early adopter and also providing our internal expertise through whether it is data analytics and, and, and healthcare uh, 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 delivery solutions as such. So that's that's where the health system is moving into. So I'm, I'm really fortunate to be in that position to help uh, collaborate with, uh, with this ecosystem. So I don't have- All right. So first of all, I want to thank everyone that has participated today. And um, the panelists, our wonderful panel of investors, um, Derek Metzold, and the sponsors that made this program possible. Um, specifically Life Science Nation and um, Demi Colton, who donated the prizes that I am about to award. Um, so um, in the case of Life Science Nation, that is for our emerging growth category. And the winner um, for a free registration at the Resi Conference for during JP Morgan Week is Desert Valley Tech. Congratulations, Travis. And Thank you. Yay. And then for um, our seed companies, we are awarding um, first, second, and third place. And in this case, um, first place will get a free um, seed level participation at Biotech Showcase. And then um, second and third place will receive discounts for the, that program. And drum roll, please. The winner in the seed category is Theracia. So congratulations to Theracia. And um, second place is to Surpass. And third place is to Vaccina. So Natalie will be coordinating with all of our winners. And thank you very much for those sponsors that provided that support. Also, um, this program benefits AZ Advances. And I want to thank our AZ Advances um, donor sponsors, Castle Biosciences and Brex. Um, both of which who have made donations to AZ Advances as we continue to work to build an, an ongoing and sustainable flow of early stage capital in Arizona forever. So if anyone has questions about AZ Advances, you can make donations on the website at azadvances.org or please contact us um, and we will be more than happy to give you more information some of our successful investors might need a tax write-off before the end of the year, and it's a 501c3 public charity. All right, and with that, Natalie has an exciting announcement, and I'm going to pass it back. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to share my screen here, and uh, to introduce uh, to you uh, the 
uh, AZ Bio Peers mentoring program uh, starting in January 2022. Uh, we will, we're going to group, um, have to group mentoring sessions to grow people's businesses. So if there are any mentors in the audience or people, uh, companies looking for mentoring, um, please look in the chat. There's a link to a form to uh, look at, to submit your interest uh, for this program. It's uh, the group mentoring will be between three and six mentors per company, meeting at approximately once or twice a month. Uh, and then uh, to, and it's gonna be milestone focused. So based on the company requirements and the mentor uh, suggestions for milestones. Uh, the meetings will be focused on those and making that progress. So uh, thank you so much and uh, hope forward to, hope look forward to speaking with you about this program and with more information coming soon. Thank you, Joan. Please take it away. Thank you again, Natalie. And um, we are so thankful for all of our peers mentors who have stepped up and given feedback on the development of this program and very, very excited to see how it will continue to develop with our fabulous companies and future companies in 2022 and beyond. And with that, we're gonna wrap things up. Thank you so much for joining us for the AZ Advances Innovation Showcase. Again, thank you to our speakers, Derek Metzold, President and CEO of Castle Biosciences, our fabulous investor panel, and of course, our rapid fire companies. And uh, stay tuned, there are more exciting developments coming throughout Bioscience Week, and we hope that you will all join us for future sessions. Have a great week. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.